Welcome to another This Week in Rails summary. This Week Emmanuel has prepared the This Week in Rails. And if you want to receive a copy of This Week in Rails, you can go to world.hey.com forward slash this.week.n.rails. And just so you know, this is not a publication that I create. It is created by a team of people that do this as a contribution to the Ruby on Rails community. So I do want to give a shout out to them and thank them for all of their hard work and continued work because they have been doing this for many years now. So the first change is log a warning if active support cache is given an expiration in the past. And this one is pretty cool and it's really important because if you've ever tried to debug a situation where you were making a write or a fetch from the Redis cache, because the expire zat was set into the past, then it would silently fail. And in your application, as you're testing it out, you may not even notice that something is wrong. Or if you do, and that's the bigger issue, is that you really have no idea why it's failing or why you're not seeing the proper outcome. So this is a great addition to the framework because it's going to make our debugging life a lot easier. And with the next one, if you were doing multiple databases, if you created a Rails application in Rails 6 and you've upgraded it up to Rails 7, then this one could be applicable to you if you had multiple databases. Specifically, if you were setting the legacy connection handling. In Rails 6, if you switch the role to say reading, then all the database connections would also switch to that role. In Rails 6.1, you could set the legacy connection handling to false to disable that behavior. However, this flag was removed in Rails 7, so if you kind of fit that criteria, then this one could be applicable to you. So if we look at the notes for this particular change, we can see that the setter has been redefined. However, the getter isn't redefined. We're just now going to see an error if that flag is used. And as such, looking at the code, we can see that if you do have the legacy connection handling is equal to, then that's simply just going to raise an error. Next, we have a bug fix if you're using the method in order of, and if you pass a nil value in there, then that would have created an invalid SQL, but instead we now have a fix, so we won't get errors raised instead. Next, we have the rescue EOF error, error from rack on a multi-part request, and you would get this end of file error from a multi-part post request in certain situations. And so this one's really appreciated even though I don't know if I've ever experienced this specific issue, but it's one of those things where as you're developing and you come across this kind of error, you would likely have no idea why you're actually getting this error. You would just see that it was an internal server error, error 500, and you'll be going through your code trying to figure out why this error is actually happening. Or maybe worse yet, it's happening in production. And as you're trying to go through and figure out what's going on in production, unable being able to replicate it on your local development environment, you're then just scratching your head that maybe the client or someone is uploading a bad file and then they're getting an error, yet you're unable to reproduce it. And then lastly, we got a description of breaking changes and the deprecation cycle to the guides. And so that's great that the expectations are being set, especially around breaking changes and the deprecation of certain functions. And so in the guides for contributing to Ruby on Rails, we just got a few updates of what a breaking change is and how that behavior should be removed. And also in situations when behavior is being changed. So unless if you're contributing to the Ruby on Rails framework, this one isn't going to apply to you very much, except when it's put into practice from those contributors, because as breaking changes are being introduced, and as we are keeping our applications up to date, in our logs, we would then have the visibility of those breaking changes. So it's great for us that the expectations are being set for the contributors around the deprecation cycle. And so to wrap up this week in Rails, there were 11 people contributing to the framework that had their code merged in. So again, I want to thank each one of you for your contributions to the Rails framework. And that's all we have for this week in Rails. Thanks for watching.